Well, good morning. It's City Impact Church here in Moncton, New Brunswick, coming to you live. And uh, we are kind of continuing on grace. Last week we talked about grace, what grace was. A lot of people think that grace is simply uh, a license to sin or it's simply, you know, a one-time deal that you're saved by grace. But it's really an empowerment. It's really the ability of God doing what we don't have the ability to do, which salvation is part of that. Uh, it's also the authority of God. So today we're going we're gonna to kind of bring you into how, like, what does that look like? The power and the authority that grace brings. What is it? What is that power and authority? And how do I access it in my life, feet on the ground, on a continual basis? And uh, 2 Corinthians 12.9 uh, says this. It's, it's talking about Paul. And he's gone to God about this thing in his life, this thorn in his flesh. And he's saying to God, please take it away. And God's answer is not what he thought it would be. God's answer is this. But he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities that the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. And so God is saying that I'm not going to take that away from you. I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to give you power and authority. Remember, grace is God's ability, power and authority to overcome that thing. And so now Paul realizes God isn't going to take this away. I have to face this. And see, a lot of times we want God to take something away, but God is saying, no, if I take it away, it'll come back. And then you'll have, I'll have to take it away again and take it away again. And at some point it might even overcome you. But if you overcome it, if, if you understand you have power and authority, now, it's not your power and it's not your authority. And we're going to talk about that. It's God's power and God's authority. So when we understand it's delegated authority, it's delegated power. And so I have the ability of God living in me to overcome things. So this thing that was attacking Paul, God said, my ability in you is sufficient for you to overcome this. Because once you overcome it, now it serves you. Remember David and Goliath? Remember what Goliath said? If I, over, if I win this battle, you will serve me. If you win this battle, I'll serve you. The enemy that you have in front of you, if you don't defeat it, you will serve it. But if you defeat it, it will serve you. And so when God will allow us to defeat things so that when we defeat it, then when it comes around again, we know it can be defeated. And more than that, we can help other people defeat it. We can get it off of other people. You know, somebody that's defeated addiction, a lot of times will be used to set addicts free. Somebody that's overcome sickness, a lot of times they'll become healing evangelists. Almost every healing evangelist that I know overcame major sickness, you know. And so, you know, like Lester Summer was blowing up chunks of his lung. He had TB so bad and he was bleeding and stuff and he, and he got healed of that. He overcame that sickness through the ability of God and then he became a huge evangelist. Like there's something about when you overcome something that then when you face it again, you know there's an assurity I can overcome this by the power of God and the ability of God. And so this grace of God is something that we use through our whole walk. And he says, where you are weak, I am strong. What does he even mean by that? We're going to see that from the scripture, that it's not that we're walking around like weaklings. It's not like that we're not strong Christians. It's when we admit that we do not have the ability to overcome these things in ourselves, then we allow God's ability to come work through us, and that's when He becomes strong. Because if you think you got it, if you don't need God, then He won't show up. He won't be able to be strong for you because you're strong for yourself, right? You know, and it doesn't make you weak. It doesn't, doesn't mean that you're a weakling or that you're not a strong believer because you're asking God for help. No, it's the total opposite. Your dependence is on Him, and that's what grace is. Grace is us depending on God's ability God's power, God's authority to work through us. It's not begging God to do something. It's understanding He wants to do it through us. We're a vessel. And so it is, you know, I always tell our people, we don't pray from earth to heaven. We're praying from heaven to earth, right? 
So we're taking our seat in Christ, that seat of authority, and where do we take that seat? It's in our submission to Him. It's when we say, I am weak, but you are strong. I can't do this. My ability's not enough. And, and you know, sometimes our strength can be our weakness. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes we can get depending on our own strengths and not depend on God. And that's not a good place to be. I, I believe that's why God always uses people that we, it's the last one. Like Jesus, all his disciples, he picked the ones that others walked by, that others denied, you know. And so he picked them because he knew that they would be totally dependent on God and totally dependent on him to show them the way because they were not dependent on themselves. And a lot of times God will use those that are downtrodden, those that are, you know, uh, that society's cast off. He'll use them to do the greatest things because they don't depend on themselves. They're not, you know, dependent on themselves. And we're, we're going to keep going through that. But there's a verse last week. It just... Out of the whole teaching on grace, out of all of that, it was all powerful. I had people say, oh, I got set free, different things. But out of all that, for me personally, what stood out the most is this verse here. is Ephesians 2.8. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And right here, right here, this is it. And that not of yourselves. And that kept jumping out at me. I, I couldn't get away from it. That not of yourself. Or in other words... It didn't come from you. Or it's not out of your ability. It's out of his ability. And when we, when we can understand that fully, then we can operate in power. I heard the Holy Ghost say this to me. He said, you can't be full of God if you're full of yourself. You can't be full of God if you're full of yourself. And so it's so important that we understand that. You can't be, so if you're full, if you think you're all, if you think you can do this, if it's all about you and it's all in you, then God can't invade. He cannot take what you don't give him. You know, in transition today, Curtis was saying that, you know, if you're holding on to money like this, well, yeah, you might be holding on to that coin or whatever it is, but it's only when you let go of it that God can put more in there. He can't put anything in there when your fist is closed to what you have, Right? Well, it's the same in everything in your life. All your giftings. If you don't give your gifting and your calling to Him, He can't anoint you. He can't fill that area so that you can do this. So it's so important that you understand that, that it's, it's His ability working in us, but only when we allow it. Grace can only operate when we allow it. Because, and, and when I say full of yourself, well, there's two ways you can look at it. Some people are just full of themselves. They're arrogant. They're prideful. God can't work through that. But there's also when people are full of themselves that they depend on their abilities. I'll give you an example. I've seen musicians that are just phenomenal musicians but are not anointed. I've seen other musicians that maybe weren't the best, but they so depended on God that the anointing just flowed. But I've seen musicians that understood that even though I have all this talent, I still need him for the anointing that destroys yoke, that helps people out. And so it's all about our heart where it's set. Is it set on God being able to do this or can I do this myself? And, and God is, you know, depending on us to open ourselves up to allow him to work through us. In John 3.30, John said this. He said, I must, he must increase, but I must decrease. He can't increase if I don't decrease. Wherever you die, he lives. Are you getting this? Like, less of you, more of him. The more we die to the flesh, the more we live to the spirit, right? And so it's not that he wants to take away um, our ambitions and our dreams and all of that. No, it's that he wants to fulfill them. And he wants us to depend on him. And in our walk with God, in our own lives, in our own personal life, in ministry, whatever it might be, there has to be a dependence on him. That is where grace kicks in. Grace can only kick in where we allow it to. And so when you understand this, it causes you to walk in a whole other realm. It, it causes you to walk in power and authority like never before because it's not in myself, 
It's Him working through me. Praise God. I hope this helps you in your walk with God to understand how grace functions. That it is not just a one-time thing. It's not just I got saved by grace. It's not just I'm begging God so His mercy came. No, it is much, it's an empowerment. It is, you know, it, it, grace empowers me to live above sin, but it also empowers me to do the work of the kingdom. Amen. You know, maybe you're listening today and you say, well, I haven't even had the first part of grace which is salvation. If that's you today and that you've never asked Christ into your heart, you've never asked Him to be Lord of your life, and you know you can't forgive yourself, and you know you can never measure up to the fullness of God, and, and, and you're needing help in your life, maybe it's in, in help in your marriage, maybe it's help in, in your finances or something, that your, your life is just not, maybe you're, you've got addictions or stuff. It all begins with asking Him to come and to live into your life. And so if that's you today, I'd love to pray with you. Maybe you were with God and, and you've, you've strayed. Maybe you're that prodigal that's coming back home today. Well, we want to welcome you home and we want to pray with you. Is that okay? Yeah? Okay. Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus. I thank you that he died for me. Father, right now, I ask you, forgive me of my past and make it brand new starting today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we either want to welcome you back or welcome you into the kingdom of God. We're excited for you. If you're ever in the Moncton area, we are here Sunday morning, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We would love to get to meet you in person. God bless.